Hey, it's yellow. We're live. It Hi, happened. Internet. Hey, everyone. My name is Fraser Kane. I am the publisher of Universe Today, and this is your virtual star party for 16th of February, 16th of February 2014. 2014. I apologize. I'm fried. Uh, my uh, my garage just flooded, and I've been uh, spending the day. Uh, pu- oh. Yeah, it's sort of getting getting all the water back out. Yeah, my uh, my drain, oh, know- my driveway flooded over, and water. It was I didn't know. I mean, I know you like sailing, around. but I didn't realize <laughs> yeah, DIY. Yeah, sailor. exactly. Bring it right <laughs> into my garage and, and float the boat right <laughs> out my uh, out my garage. That's the plan. <laughs> so anyway, not bad. It was. I was really lucky and sort of got it all under control. But uh, yeah. So anyway, I'm like, I've been like working all afternoon. Anyway, enough about me. Let's talk about space. So who Ooh. have we got joining us tonight? We got Dave Dickinson, aka the Astro Guy, <laughs> with a Z. Thanks for not letting me go live with that. <laughs> exactly. Ready to do battle. Air dryer uh, ready. We got uh, Gary Ganella. Hey, Gary. Hi, guys. Hey, James McGee. Hey, James. Evil Hello. James McGee. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How is uh, fighting crime in Canada, by the way, Fraser? <laughs> <laughs> we got Mike Phillips. We got, hey. or at least the computer simulation of Mike Phillips. Yes, my uh, my camera stopped working, but everything else seems to be in order here. Well, so. all you have to do oh, lost is you stars. just have to go on to uh, uh, YouTube, do a search for the uh, Virtual Star Party, and you see this great <laughs> video of all about Michael and his uh, wonderful telescope. Yes, but you didn't come to see me, did you? Let's look at the stars. Let's look at the stars. <laughs> we got Mike Simmons from Astronomers Without Borders. Hey, Mike. You're muted, Uh-oh. Mike. Unmute you. He's muted, Mike. Frequently. <laughs> we got Roy Salisbury. Hello, Roy. Hello. We've got my co-host, Scott Lewis, with a brand new Twitter handle. With a brand new Twitter handle. I am no longer Bald Astronomer. I've been toiling over that for a long time. It was, <laughs> it was a joke, like, two years I know, ago. I know, I know. I didn't be on Twitter all that much, but uh, it's grown, and I need to let it go. So I'm now Scientific Scott for all my science outreach efforts. Perfect. <laughs> Follow Scott on Twitter, at Scientific Scott. Now, if they were already following Bald Astronomer, they'll have... They it's already switched. Scott. Yep, I just switched it over. So all my previous followers still there. I'm still following everyone else, but it'll take more. I talk a lot. <laughs> All right. And 140 characters or less. <laughs> we got Shah Ahmed. Hey, Shah. Hey. In Malaysia. And uh, how is your, uh, how's your volcano doing? Oh, my volcano? Oh, is there anything seems to be blowing away? Wait, from, it's from your from volcano, yeah. Shah? <laughs> no, it's not mine. <laughs> no. <laughs> it seems to be okay. It seems to be okay now. How, how far away is it from, from you? The, the one in Sumatra was about, I think, about um, 200 kilometers away from to the west of uh, Peninsula Malaysia. Wow. So it's blowing away to the Indian Ocean at the moment. So ash yeah. isn't coming your way? Uh, no, no, not at the moment. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. We got Tom Nathy. Hey, Tom. Howdy! It's in soggy Portland, Oregon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got soggy Vancouver Island. It's the, yeah, it's the, it's we, got, the, we got the monsoons coming in. Yeah, it's the season for it, so... All right. Well, so before we get on with the space stuff, I just want to remind everyone that they can uh, they can interact with us. It's it's allowed. We permit it. In fact, we encourage it, and uh, we'll even take requests if we can. So the best way to do that, I've enabled Q and A app on this Hangout, so you should see that anywhere you are. If you're on YouTube, uh, you should just see it says Fraser Kane is interacting with the audience or something like that. So you can just go ahead and. Uh, Click on that, and then you can see the, all the questions that people have asked, and you can still see the video and see the, and vote up questions and and uh, yeah. And stuff and things. And what what? And stuff and things. And uh, stuff see, and we're, things. We're also yeah. we're also on Twitter at the underscore VSP. Uh, we have two, two event page, one on our official channel for virtual star parties, and one on Fraser. So I'm trying to monitor all of those. And, yeah, it is up on Facebook if you really don't like any, like yourself. <laughs> if you really don't like yourself, it's on Facebook. <laughs> if you hate science, if you use hate Facebook. Science, 
and kittens it's on if you Facebook. Hate kittens, yeah. You can go to Facebook. If you hate oh. intelligent conversations. All right. Use Facebook. Use oh. And I might have created a GeoCities website for it. Just oh, good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone. Telescopes. All right. I'm going to start with uh, with Gear's view because it's awesome. Okay. That's yeah. my only criteria tonight. We got the horse head here and the flame nebula, and this is Alnatec, which is the left hand star in Orion's belt for positioning purposes. Fantastic. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, <laughs> Mike, come on. Have you got anything? It. Mike, got the horse head nebula? What is it? Oh, he's muted. Uh oh. Oh, you talking to this mic? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was I was playing with things here. Playing the horse had no the horse had nebula knows no borders. No, that's true. Is that what you're we're looking at with Gary? That's what we're looking at right now yeah. With, uh, yeah. Yeah, with Gary's view. Uh, horse head nebula in the left there. That's the I think it's called the flame nebula. There's just yep. stuff all through this area. You know, look at the wide angle uh, images, uh, especially in H alpha, and you just see stuff. It's just spacey. There's a lot of H alpha stu uh, stuff in there. A lot of hydrogen. Now, does anyone know if there's any connection between Analtech and the and the nebula itself? Like, did Analtech form from that nebula? I don't think so. I think yeah. No, I think I think Analtech is in front of it. Yeah, yeah, I believe it's far in front of it. Oh, okay. From our yeah. perspective. Yeah, and there's a star. Reason why it's backlit like that. There's a star in behind the horse head that's illuminating, you know, much like a silhouette. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. The, the yeah. gas is actually fluorescing. It's a little more like a, a fluorescent light bulb. So right, yeah. That's where it yeah. gets those colors right. there, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Excellent. Okay, so now yeah, we've got another way. treat tonight, and this is, this is we're going to do a twofer tonight that we have wanted to do since we started the Virtual Star Party. We have, I think one time we maybe did it, but we weren't sure, which was the the Great Red Spot on Jupiter. Oh, I thought was, literally. you were talking about a supernova. Like, we thought we did. Yeah, but that's yeah, the yeah, way. yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> tonight, we've got the Great Red Spot. Yeah, it just transited about 10 minutes ago, according to Sky and Telescope. You can see it as a, on that thicker belt. It's like a pinkish oh, notch yeah. there on the edge. No, it's turning. It's turning towards us, right? It's just turn. It just turned towards us. Now it's turning away. And Jupiter rotates uh, a little faster than ten hours. So within about two hours, it's going to be over the limb and disappear it again by by midnight here. Anyway, because it's almost ten o'clock here. So, so it's, I'm gonna, uh, and I'm going to switch between David's view and James's view because there you can. Yeah, I think you can see it in James. It's like right in the middle to the right a bit there, right? Yeah, to the I left right of, the, uh, of the yeah. red spots. Yeah. Uh, you yep. see a little dark it. spot. It almost looks like dust, but it's oh, not. Yeah. It's actually the moon transiting. Yeah, there's. Uh, Wait, you just ruined the surprise. Oh, sorry. Oh, surprise alert. Alert. oh just ruined oh. it. That's oh, what I'm here no. for. You need a seven second delay here for catching <laughs> We can <laughs> do that. I know how to do that. <laughs> FCC. Yeah. Okay, fine. So the second thing, Dan. <laughs> is that we're getting a transiting Europa right now. So in other words, Europa is passing in front of Jupiter. And, uh, and you can really see it in James's view. So it's over on the left there. You can see that kind of dark spot that's blobbing around in front of Jupiter. And I'll yeah. sort of switch between between uh, James's view and David's view here, and you should be able to see it. When I got moments of good seeing, I can see it just coming in. There's a little black dot. And it's moved since we started the show, too. I can tell it's moved. Yeah, it, yeah. It so it's going to move. It'll get, what, about half... It'll, it'll probably be almost halfway across. The yeah, planet. about halfway across the planet over the course of the show. So yeah. we'll sort of keep checking back as uh, as we go. Now tonight's not going to be super great. How's the moon for you guys tonight? Uh, I can I can name it the moon here in about a few minutes. It's about twenty degrees above the horizon here. From yeah, I mean it's but it's like pretty full, right? It's uh, waning gibbous, just two days past full. Yeah. yeah. So I think we can classify that as a stupid moon. That's the thing. I'll start singing again. <laughs> it's called a Facebook moon. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, anything I, above, I think half full is. I I've decided it, is a stupid moon. It, it starts stupid interfering. Moon. Yeah. yeah. You get, you get there, the there's good stuff in that phase. There's actually good stuff. It gets out towards the limits, kind of foreshortened, but people don't look at it as much. There's some surprises out there. 
they know it's stupid. That's why. <laughs> so the the great red spot there, you should let people know if they have a little scope, they can see that too. I, uh, it, there are years when it sort of disappeared, it just went away for years at a time, but it's back now, and you know it's easy to see in a small scope. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was much more red. Yeah. People will say it about thirty or forty years ago than it is. Yeah. It's kind of a pinkish salmon color now. Yeah. So well, we I... got a question here from Jason Carlisle. Uh, are all these images live telescope feeds, and what telescopes are used? So yes, they are live telescope feeds. Now you can see Absolutely. with Jupiter, the Jupiters, and the Sun, which I'll show in a second, how you can see the atmospheric turbulence. So these are absolutely live views of these objects. I can totally see Europa now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, the other ones are live in that they, they have to take like about a minute or two minute exposure and then they're posting the picture live. So what you're seeing is two minutes of light and then posted live. Yeah. Near Unless, real time. And then I think that thing over on the right hand side is just a, is dust on his lens. So. Yeah, I'm actually gonna move so no one confuses it with the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with the yeah. yeah, yeah, the transit doesn't look that good. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, I'm going to move over to Shaw's view. Look at that. Yep. This That's is just the, awesome. Yeah. yeah. The ER 1974, I think. Yeah, the, the, the great flock of birds. I call it a flock of birds when it crossed the sun for the past week. It looks like pretty much a, like a flock of birds flying across. Is that, is that and the, it turns out to be quite bird? nice. The flappy bird. The flappy bird. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be gone as soon as we see it for a couple of weeks, and it's going to be gone away. Yeah. Now, is it yeah, rotating off the sun's limb, or is it coming to coming on the limb? Yeah, it's going off. It's on the west yeah. west side of the of the limb. So it's basically going to be gone in a few days' time. Yeah. Yeah. That's I terrific. can't re I can't remember on sunspots. Uh, some of the pictures, it looks like the sunspot is actually indented into the photosphere. Is that actual, or is that uh, just an optical illusion? Even though you know, I know the sunspot is cooler than the surrounding area. Yeah, there's sometimes a little bit lower depth as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I, I think that's a minor effect, probably more optical illusion. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess because it's called, it looks like there's like lines, and I can see like in the penumbra, it looks like it's it's a shallower thing. Mm -hmm. um, B cool says, is it possible to see some of the moons of Jupiter with 15 by 70 binoculars? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. So if yeah. you think that's even, what you're even seeing, 10x, even 10x 50s will work. Yeah. yeah. Think about what Galileo had. I mean, those 15 by 70s are way better than <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you it got does, two of them. It does help if the binoculars are supported somehow, yeah. other than you holding them. If you I have them, say, on yeah, I use my hands like to support them. And no, right. Yeah. But uh, I'm just being a smart aleck. But yeah, um, <laughs> like I got a tripod right here, and that's what I typically mount my my uh, binoculars up. I put them on a tripod, <laughs> hold them there, and that tends to help. Yeah. yeah. If you don't have that, if you've got a fence or. Something you can put your elbows on, at least make a triangle. Someone shorter than you. you know, just, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A, bald, a bald astronomer or something like that. I'm six yeah. foot, so good luck. Oh. <laughs> Bill Chamberlain can do it. <laughs> uh, Jeez, God, I didn't know they piled it that high. Oh, no, they do. Higher and deeper. Look at this. This is just cool. Just all these sunspots across <laughs> the sun right now. It's really active right now. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, there was a whole chain right across the equator of the sun a few days ago. It was kind of cool. Yeah. I probably changed to a lower magnification after this to see the chain of sunspots. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You're seeing uh, really great. How's it going there, Roy? Are you? Uh, I am battling technology. To get, yes, I'm battling bad skies. Oh no! And Mike, what what are you trying to bring up, Mike Phillips? So I am hunting this uh, near-Earth asteroid, and I think I'm in the right neighborhood, but I'm not sure. So it's moving fast enough that i got to compare the times from some earlier images to some later images here before I can pull it so out. So if we're but, lucky, um, we will see a near-Earth yes. asteroid tonight. Is, yeah, that, I, is that a 2006 DP-14 you were talking about? 
Yeah, that's the yeah. one, and it had its closest approach, I think, uh, what, three or four days ago, but yeah. it's still moving fast that, enough that I think we can detect that, it in that, at least two images a that, few seconds. That got me to do some research on that. It was about, it should be about 15th magnitude tonight. Yeah. Yeah, oh, some curious. of these. Because wow. when I first saw your message, I thought, "Ooh, did they discover something today?" So I started, and then I saw the 2006 date. And was like, no. Yeah, no, it, old. it's old. It's old. I, yeah. I think they were still requesting observations on it, so I don't know if they've pinned it down properly or not here, because it doesn't appear in the timestamp uh, to be in the right spot. I'm not sure. I, so I think this, it, looked, it looked like it passed four or five lunar distances from us. It's it's a ways. Yeah, 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 yeah and it's to, fading. To Gary, okay, well, you you let us know because I won't know when well, you found. <laughs> What you're trying to find, so yes, I'll, right. I'll yelp or something. Okay, I think I got something. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I've gone to Gary's view because because it's the rosette, and I love the rosette. You do love the rosette. Uh, yeah. It's yep. it's funny. A friend was was asking me like, "What's your favorite object in the night sky? What's your favorite nebula?" And I'm like, "Let me just show you this video." Yeah, let, that Google let made. You should ask that. It's funny. Google made this video about yeah. my favorite object. Fraser always <laughs> loves the rosette, so we always go to that when it's in. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's appropriate. It's just past Valentine's Day. Yeah. Aww. Aww. Gary's sending some Fraser love to the cosmos. <laughs> there we go. Look at all those dark kind of trails, like worm-eaten trails. In yeah. The, all yeah. This, all oh, this yeah. stuff in here is just gorgeous. Now, worms um, have we eaten the rose. Since we haven't talked about it in a while, um, so everybody knows, I'm shooting in a fairly light, polluted uh, L.A. area. Yes, you are. Very narrow band filters. Uh, the red that you're seeing in this picture is hydrogen alpha. Uh, the green is sulfur, and the blue is oxygen. And you can see it's huh? predominantly hydrogen alpha. But you can see down in here, there's a little bit of shade in color where there's some other hydrogen or, or oxygen or sulfur coming into view. Right. Now, I, I forget, the rosette is uh, part of a, a supernova explosion, or was that... Is it, it just a collapsing nebula and it's got a bubble in the middle? I don't know. I don't, I don't we know. Have, somebody must know. Mr. Rosette knows. <laughs> so I'm actually just pulling up some information on it right now. Uh, it's it's I'll, an ancient I'll, region. I'll fall on a sword if you want to research it. First, I found it. <laughs> Please fall on a sword. There you go. Okay, here you go. So, uh, and I think it's moved a little bit. Oh, so uh, this, I'm going to use this as a marker Jim here. Jim Meeker is suggesting you... that you start an Angel Fire VSP website. Uh, <laughs> Angel Fire. Like that. Yeah. I like GeoCities. Yeah? yeah. Right. Well, we could do one on the well. <laughs> yeah, we could. So, <laughs> but yeah, we'll, really we, need need a, we would need the doodah man to help us out with that. <laughs> Okay, so I found this. If you want to see it, you want sure. to change over to me. Okay, so I use this little uh, this little box here. Is top left corner is marking about where it is. So that if you follow the mouse, it's here in this image. And now uh, watch it jump. It kind of jumps uh, almost right yeah. off the edge of that box there. So so there it is. A blink comparison. And these images were taken. Let's see, 9:15 and 9:22, I think. Hey, Shaking. cool. That's yeah. cool. It's pretty faint. So yeah, it's yep. fainter than Pluto is. So yeah. Yep, I do see it. <laughs> That's cool. cool. Those are What's the are... So that is another first. It's the first time we have seen a near-Earth asteroid in a live VSP. And it, it, it's fitting kind of for me because I think it was two years ago before we really started getting regular with this that um, it, it, Eros came by and Pamela jumped on and, and did a brief hangout that I think was lost in the YouTubes somehow. And uh, I kind of caught the bug then. So yeah. been hunting these things ever since now. I think this one is 27 meters, if I recall, when I looked at it. Wow. Really. wow. That is, yeah. Whoa, that's tiny. Yeah, it's real yeah. tiny. This is how far it's moved. I mean, it's farther away now than it was before, and this is how far it's moved in about, like, 10 or 15 minutes. If I do, I do remember right when, it, when I was I was looking at the close approach data on it that this is the closest approach for this century for this asteroid. Yeah. Really? So. Oh, that's that's, really cool. Cool. that's, that's good. good. That's a good thing. <laughs> and it's still a couple lunar distances away. So. Yeah. 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 And like, when yeah, did it make right. its closest approach then? I think it was a couple of days ago. During Snowmageddon? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think that, it got brighter than... That's why it snowed so much, is all that debris yeah. on top of the asteroid. <laughs> yeah. 
the, the, the ones that really grab my attention is when they pass closer than the moon, then I start getting excited. Uh, yeah, those Jamie are scary. Orlando asked for NGC 2169. Is that up? Could someone figure that out? I could figure out. All right. I'm going to move to Shaw's view again because he's zoomed out. Look at that. Yeah, tons of these sunspots. All right. So I think I can get all the three groups of sunspots uh, in one view, I think. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. It's starting so to look like solar maximum again. So it's daytime for Shaw, and it's nighttime for the rest of the astronomers. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, you're a nighttime astronomer too, Shaw, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've only known you as a daytime astronomer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hunt planets in the daytime. Yeah, that I've yeah. Seen. yeah. Uh, Sh Shaw's, Shaw's a reverse vampire. He only comes out <laughs> during the day. Just to fit in, just to fit in, he he does all his planetary observing in the daytime. <laughs> See, I'll probably try to get. Yeah, I try to probably get try to get Venus, but it's way past the meridian from from my place, so uh, uh, so it's quite a difficult thing. Yeah. The moon should um, be passing in a couple weeks. Nope. Speaking of the moon, David, did you want to try and get the moon tonight? Should we get another view. Of, let's go. Well, not view of your view. One last look at uh, Jupiter in your view, and then we'll we'll get the moon. Or did you already start moving it? Oh, oh there we go. No. I've got one of the moons centered there too. I believe that's uh, Io. Kind of flashing in and out. I purposely boosted the contrast way. Oh, yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah. It looks cruddy, but you can see the moon in there. Cool. I'll, go to, I'll go to Jane's view, and we can. Yeah, you can definitely see Europa moving across the across yeah. the planet. Look at that! It's it's sort oh, of wow. chasing the gray red spot. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever actually seen this before. Uh, so that's pretty fascinating. <laughs> Will we get? We'll get a shadow too, right? Oh, that is a shadow you're seeing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the the, uh, plant, the moons themselves are sometimes a little harder to see because it depends on where they're crossing the planet. If it's the same color as the moon, it's really hard. Um, Eric Charlin says, "I spotted Venus this week just before going in for work. It was so bright. Yeah, a Venus is just amazing in the morning sky now. It's just yeah. super bright. It's just, just past maximum brilliancy for this year, so." My cat is going crazy. Right. Look at that. I want to do a quick shout out too to one of my friends, Katie Mack, one of the uh, astronomers that's down in Australia. But she's tweeting as real scientist right now and is promoting our show. So, hi Thanks, everyone Katie. on Twitter. Hey Katie. Thank you. Hi Katie. Phenomenal. Oh, Mike, you got the Bernard's Loop. Well, that's the whole thing. I'm totally cheating. This is completely cheating. It's not live. I, lo I love that you feel shame about this, though. This is perfect. This is. <laughs> I do. You, you've I, come I, on. I, you've I, come I, into this really, really well. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So I just want. I don't want to. I don't want people to realize I'm faking here. Yeah. But yeah, that's Orion. That's what I was talking about. So I thought it'd be interesting because a lot of times at star parties, you want to put it in context. People are always saying, like, uh, I can like at the 60 inch Mount Wilson, when we use that for outreach, people say, "Oh, can you show us?" Uh, of course, said nebula. Well, you know, it's really faint. It's this little thing right down here, and the contrast is very poor. But this is that whole area, the, the mm -hmm. flame and the horse header right here, and here's the belt, see, and the Orion Nebula, and this is the whole thing. So that area is just full of good stuff. Yeah. Well, and I remember, Mike, uh, that you, know, you and I talked a little over a year ago, but we should totally try to get up there with Mount Wilson and try to see if we can stream some from the 60-inch, uh, get a, a small star party going on up there. Heck yeah, I can, I can oh, that. Oh, my. Yeah, that would be something, <laughs> wouldn't it? I, I don't think they'll let us use the 100, but uh, the 60 Wrong. would be fun. Correction. 100-inch oh. has got a new eyepiece uh, located where you don't have to risk your life. In order to, oh, come uh, on. I totally want to sit at the prime focus and just hang out. <laughs> that, yeah. That's a, definitely For dear not. life. <laughs> well, we'll go to Gary's view because he's got the actual... Uh, oh, that itself. would be so cool. 
Yeah, sixty inch telescope with the virtual star party. That would also be a first, I think. So let's let's make that happen. I can do that. Yeah. Done. This is so let's great. Let's do it, Mike. I'll shoot you an email later. I've got your card somewhere. Yeah, yeah, do that. <laughs> and I mentioned, by the way, I mean, Sharon's got fantastic solar views here. I think it's seen as good, and he's really good. But in uh, during Global Astronomy Month, I'll talk about later, I'm going to do a live uh, webcast from one of the solar telescopes. That oh, I've set up oh and wow. Trying to spectrograph and stuff. So, yeah, we should totally do that. Cool Orion Nebula. Yeah, this is... Um, the moon's affecting it a little bit. Normally, I get more wispy around here, and the bright area. You see this? This is an artifact of the camera. If you look at the stars, how they're streaking, yeah. they're too bright, so it smears a little bit. Is so? Is it almost like you did too long of an exposure? Yeah, and that's um, that is a 60-second exposure bin four by four. If I wow. do a less of an exposure, we don't get this around in here. Yeah, that's an yeah. artifact of the CCD arrays. It's called blooming. Yeah, it just spills and goes in one line. So when you see that, yeah, just saturated. Fact, I've got another one here. Let me see. That is fantastic. That's awesome. Um, Cigar box asked a question about the sun. Why are the sunspots in a line? Yeah, oh, great question. The group to get uh, in. The, the, the groups themselves are, are related to each other. They sort of form at the same time, but sunspots tend to form at the same latitude on the sun. So uh, throughout the cycle, you see them at different levels, and, and they, they form at that particular latitude, come and go. So they oh. kind of say later in, the later in the cycle, they move more toward the equator of the sun, yeah. That's when, when the new cycle starts, they're at higher latitudes, so... Hmm. Oh, okay. So they, yeah, they start closer to the poles, and then over the seven-year period, they start moving towards yeah, into the equator. Uh, it, it actually forms a kind of butterfly diagram known as a spore diagram. Right. There's there's a rule called Spore's Law. That it's one of the signs when the new solar cycle starts that you start seeing high latitude sunspots. Then they start moving down toward the now. Now, why? It's something to do with the decline layer, like the conveyor belt of the of the of the sun there in the interior. They don't completely understand it, but they know that that's one of the things that happens during the solar cycle. Uh, Ronald, wow. Ronald Lynch reminds us, uh, when's the lunar eclipse going to happen? It's not April 15th. Now. April 15th. Ta U.S. Tax Day. And this is going to so be a good one. So, so we, have, we have something to look forward to on Tax Day here. Yeah, this is going to be a, a lunar eclipse visible from North America. Where else? I don't think that's a Sunday. I, I, I think I looked ahead and said, I wonder if that's during the VSP, but it's not <laughs> no. on Sunday. I don't think it I'm is. I'm sure we'll be broadcasting it live, though. So yeah. whoever wants to participate, we'll, we'll try and get that live. Cause... If you do, you know, that's during Global Astronomy Month, and we're mentioning it. You know, uh, Scott, we ought to talk about that, too. We'll make it yeah. a, a GAM program. All right. Well, Ed, I typically yeah. do something at our campus at Citrus. I'll set up some um, six inch, and I'll bring my. And we have all sorts of white uh, white light filters we put up on there, so we could definitely team up and try to get something going. That's where we first did our first big uh, solar. Yeah, I know. Was was on my right. campus. Hmm. Um, Patrick Calhoun asks, "What kind of telescope are you using on Jupiter?" So, what's your telescope, James? My telescope is a uh, Nexstar 6SE uh, Celestron telescope. It's an alt azimuth mount. Uh, it's not very expensive uh, or fancy. Uh, the only thing I'm really doing to kind of cheat here is I have a 5X Barlow uh, made by Teleview and a, a Canon 6D. Uh, so that gives me a lot of pixels to deal with yeah. so I can digitally zoom in on it uh, without having to use my uh, 5X and 2X Barlow, uh, which I've done before. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, and then, David, your telescope is an 8-inch. Yeah, and you can see it right here. It's Celestron 8-inch, and it's, it's you can actually see the, the corrector plate cover of dew right now. So. And you're drying <laughs> its hair. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Style. Uh, oh! I'm, actually moving, I'm actually moving over to the moon right now, so... I've never heard that sound before. What is that? <laughs> oh, you've heard the air dryer? Yeah, I don't know what that oh, thing yeah. is. Yeah. I'm one of those yeah, in the that's, that's, I didn't that's actually. That's the slew motor uh, going into no. turbo mode. That's this. This is a hair dryer my wife allows me to use for this. 
So did you say that I was fighting crime in Canada last week, Scott? Is that what I would you... never say anything like that. Really? Um, yeah, well, it... I just figured it would be such a short trip of going and fighting crime over in Vancouver Island, you know, of all the crazy crime you guys have over there. All the crazy crime, so I, <laughs> so I really had to be fighting crime in Canada. So, someone was littering Canada. by the sailboat, eh? I better go <laughs> pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Your Canadian accent is adorable. Thank you. Somebody stealing the toques. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is great. We can watch. Uh, so let's I let's let's run through the telescopes while we're at it. So yeah, let's, let's take so, a look at what yeah. we have. So Mike Phillips, what telescope do you have? Or is he he's checked out? I uh, no 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 I uh, yeah I came back. I'm trying to find a new object here. Um, I have a 14 inch Newtonian. That's uh, f f four and a half. And so what do you mean by f four and a half to our viewers that have no idea what you're talking about? So when you talk about telescopes as different size telescopes, which is the amount of light they can collect based upon how big the lens of the mirror is, and then there's a ratio of that size of, of the mirror or the lens to the actual fo focus point. So a long focal length usually magnifies more, and a short focal length usually gives you a wider field of view and more bright stars. Most Newtonians are fairly uh, low number focal ratios, and then most Schmitts are, are, are fairly high. So like if I was going to do planetary, I, I, I also have to use the, the 5x power mate. But, so the deep sky stuff that I'm doing now or the near-Earth asteroid hunting I'm doing with strictly just the native focal length. Oh, awesome. Uh, and Roy's got his first image, and tell us your telescope. Oh, this is a terrible image, by the way. Hey, um, it's pretty. My seeing just sucks tonight. Every time I get to an image, by the time I get it, it's out of focus. Um, so that's M81. Um, the telescope this was done with was an 8-inch uh, RC, or a 10-inch RC telescope, which is about a 2,000, the 10 inch is about a 2,000 millimeter focal length. Um, I also have a 106 millimeter refractor that I should have actually been using instead of this one, because this one's giving me headaches. Yeah? Is it easy for you to switch to the other one, or you got to, like... No, it's it's real easy to switch over. Okay, all right. I might, I might actually do that, because this one's just not working out for me. Do what you need to do. And then we can see the other telescope, which would be great. Yeah, I'll do uh, an M81 with that one. All right, so Gary's got a view of his telescope. Yeah, this is a 14-inch uh, Celestron that I am have the camera mounted up in the front here, so I'm about a 700-millimeter focal length, which gives me a view that's just about a degree and a half by a degree. Make it dance. I want to see it dance. Is what? Is he taking, he's probably Make taking it. a picture right now. You got, you got to shoot at it, like... Come on, Dan. Um, <laughs> oh, you want it to move? I can yeah. do that. Yeah, I can do that. I, love, I, I, I am such a kid with this, but I love yeah, I watching I love, the telescopes yeah, being able to watching it live. Stew. There we sure go. Goes. That's how you know it's live. See? Look at it yeah. go. Is this live? It's break yeah. dancing. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> uh, Dave... Duthet wants to know, can we see the supernova in M82? Um, Done it. I've been that there. Is. <laughs> is it, but is it still in the sky or is it faded away now? It should be still there. Yeah. I think Probably it's a little still different. around 11th magnitude, I think. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to go to Dave's view of this <laughs> stupid moon. Kind of turbulent there. I'm right along the, the Terminator, like waxing, waning give this now, just past full Friday night. Don't you actually have a, val a full a full Valentine's Day moon on Friday? I, I did a little yeah. sleuthing, and the last time that actually ha happened was in 1968. The last time we had a full moon on Valentine's Day. In huh. one of the weird things. Was it was when? 1968 was the last time the full moon fell on February 14th, wow. which is kind of weird. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought it would have been that far back. I would have guessed maybe one. Uh, sorrow cycle back maybe like around like 18 or 19 years ago. Actually, that was... Can you slew around back. a little bit? Yeah. I can. Kind of hard when I'm zoomed in to tell where I'm aimed, and plus it's, you don't get a lot of contrast. Uh, yeah, there's the there's lunar happenings. Someone asked earlier what your camera was, David. 
Oh, I have a. It's a, a Logitech C two thousand seventy, and I. It's like I bought it for twenty dollars at Walmart. It's not optimized for astronomy by any means. It's uh, it's just one I modified. I did I did a whole blog post on computers today. I just took and uh, modified it to fit into the eyepiece holder. Yeah. Took the lens off. Did you let the dog out? Yeah, you, you got a dog. That's the neighbors. No, that's the neighbors' dogs out. I want to share this real quick. Uh, Helen Reed. Uh, she uh, showed us this a little while ago, but I still love it. So we are. Um, so Fraser was fighting crime, but it was in Vermont because the VSP solved three county burglary spree. <laughs> 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 it's Vermont State Police, but yeah. I mean, come on. we helped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. So you know, when we're not uh, dis- you know, not discovering supernovae, we're also fighting crime in, in the east coast of. The U.S. <laughs> um, I'm going to move to Gary's view. This is uh, Thor's helmet. First time I've done it in color. Um, this awesome. deserves a longer exposure. Yeah. But it's coming out. You can see the red and the blues of the oxygens. There's even a little background's a little green, but um, with a longer exposure, yeah. this thing looks great. That's a one yeah. minute with each filter. Hey guys. That's, that's still pretty good. On the uh, yeah, top right of, on the top right of my image, that looks like there's a moon. Uh, I see it. I'm not really uh, sh- sure. Another which one moon. Is. Yeah. Oh my. Let me brighten it up a little bit more. Is that? Oh, you, did Europa pop out the other island, side? Right. I think I think Europa's coming out. Yeah, so you yeah. can see it casting shadow back. Uh, That's the moon yeah. itself there. Yes. That's awesome. Well, that's that's how awesome. fast it moves, right? I mean, it was it was more towards the middle at the start of the party, and now look, it's way over off Let's to say, the either side. Either that, or this we get in a rough. Crazy. Or, uh, well, the, isn't that the shadow still uh, a little less than halfway across? And that's Europa off the edge. Yeah. So, that's so the amazing. sun is is off to the side. If it's at opposition, they're more lined up, but. Yeah, right. You don't get yeah, we're heading toward we're heading toward quadrature, so it's off to the side now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Europa was there the whole time, and it's just harder to see. It thing. was with us all along. Well, <laughs> that, it was behind Jupiter, I think. I'm not really sure. No, no, oh. it's front, in front, in front, in front, yeah. casting shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's actually very difficult to see most of the moons. Ganymede's about the only one that's fairly obvious, but the, the smaller moons are very hard to see, especially live. Yeah. Either yeah. that or that's an impact blue. <laughs> From the nearer asteroid. <laughs> yeah, I just had to point it out because uh, I don't yeah, want to excellent. melt some virtual star party. Well, are you re- are you recording any video when you're doing this, James? Uh, I thought about it, uh, and to press any buttons on my camera would be to mess up my telescope. So. Oh, would it? Okay. <laughs> don't want that. No, we can't have that. Mostly with the alt azimuth mount, it's a, it's a very sensitive beast. Don't we all know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I found a, a M67. Somebody tell me what kind of cluster that is. I thought that was a nice, evenly distributed ah, one. We're I, just it, seeing a picture of you. Oh, you don't see the... Oh. Well, that's cool. So Brian there. Simpson is noting uh, you can see the Jupiter moon configuration by typing Jupiter into Wolfram Alpha. Nice. Yeah, I, I love Wolfram Alpha. For, you know the videos that I'm doing on, on YouTube, I use Wolfram Alpha all the time for all kinds of things where I'm like doing calculations like how many, man, how many stars in the Milky Way divided by the average density of space, and you can just type this stuff right into Wolfram Alpha. It's just awesome. Do you see, do you see it now? No, we, sure. we see the, the, nope. just the you. Phillips cluster. The Phillips oh, cluster. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's like a is that a double double? Yeah, you and a and a yeah, dwarf that's, Phillips. <laughs> that's exactly what the it greater is. Greater and lesser. <laughs> My son, who everyone calls Mini Me. <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna move to Gary's view while you. Uh, this is our here. requested NGC 2169. Wait a oh, second. Lord. Wait a minute. I see it. That's our 37. It's yeah, that's our 37. 30? Can you rotate it, Gary? Yeah. We, uh, I zoomed in quite a bit because it's a fairly small asterism. But yeah, three and a seven. Yeah. And we're just in time for Sayo. There's, there's my have. full oh, frame nice view. view. Right. Yeah, so do a rotate and then more people will see it. 
But if you, if you don't see it, this this asterism. Thanks, Jamie. This is awesome. It's twenty one sixty nine, and it is the um, the thirty seven cluster. Damn, the thirty seven cluster. So yeah, that a little easier. Uh, yeah, there, there it we is. Go. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, this is what we tease Nicole about quite often. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish it said yeah, forty two. There we go. Yeah, wouldn't that it be would great be if it said forty two? <laughs> Yeah, yes. I don't think there's any any sort of cluster named 42 that I'm aware of. No, that would just be too much. That I'm would. sure if you... Um, uh, Jason, Jason Carlos says, do you guys have your own astronomy community on Google Plus or website? What is the best way to follow you guys? Scott, what do you recommend? Uh, um, well, we have the space community, but it's kind of like the Wild West right now. Uh, so... Let's see. The, I would say the best community for really engaging with this sort of thing would be the Science and Google Plus community. There's a lot of discussion um, on actual, you know, astronomy as a science. No, but specifically but the Virtual Star Party. For the Virtual Star Party, we have a page on Google Plus. So if you just look at Virtual Star Party on Google Plus, we are there, and we you know, that's where we have all of our events each week. And we like to. I might do another. I might do another. Uh, um, I, the word I can't think of when I made the the photo contest. Mm. I might do another photo contest coming up here. Yeah, so we post the we post the event every week, a couple of days before we actually do the event. And so if you click yes on the event, then you'll get a notification when it's about to happen. And yep. then you just click on, it'll take you to the page, and you'll be able to watch the show. We also post it. We'll mention it on Twitter on from if you if you follow what the the underscore VSP on Twitter, right. uh, if you follow Universe Today, we we post it on Twitter there. I post it to the homepage of Universe Today when we start. So it, I know it's kind of tough to, to follow where it's happening, but we try to kind of get it out as many places as we can. And so, yeah, so this is, this is just our, our home screen right here. And, you know, we post everything up as far as what's going on, where you can RSVP and share out the event, let everyone know that you're going to be here, because we, we love having new guests and having new, uh, new viewers. So please come join us and circle us. And, you know, and also, yeah, big... Big thank you uh, right here, actually, is that Huffington Post yesterday uh, went and made an article about why Google Plus isn't as terrifying as everyone thinks it is, and they, they used us and actually embedded one of our episodes into that article on why Google Plus is awesome. And I have to agree, Virtual Star Party is a big reason why Google Plus is awesome. It's actually what really brought me in to using uh, the platform as much as I do now. Yep. And so a big shout out to, to HuffPo. Thanks a lot for that. And to Matthew Rappaport. Matthew Rappaport, our friends Perfect. at HuffPo. Matthew Rappaport. Yep, right in the article. Oh, this is great, David. Beautiful view. Ooh. Yeah, I like that just whole moon. I always like to point out Amir Chrysium at the very bottom of, of the of David's image there. That's about 300 miles across. It's about the same size as uh, my home state of Oregon. Give you an idea how big the moon is. And if people always want to know where the Apollo 11 landing is, and you can kind of see the spot right now, mm -hmm. which is uh, down near the bottom. You see those two circles side by side, um, and the Apollo landing site is sort of down on the left one of those circles, sort of down at the, on the on the left hand side of it. Yep. But I can't give you more detail because it didn't really well, happen, obviously. Yeah, but the yeah the, the <laughs> lander and everything like that is super super tiny compared to the rest of the moon there. So there's yeah, no way definitely. from Earth anybody can see that. Well, people always want to ask like, can you see the the Apollo 11 landing site with the Hubble Space Telescope? And you just can't. Hello, Rose on the flag. You, you can, uh, but the. Uh, the lunar NASA's uh, lunar reconnaissance orbiter has been orbiting the moon and has captured amazing pictures of the surface of the moon. You can yeah. see like footprints and the flags and the all of the debris and the leftover rovers and and everything. It's just it's and, amazing. And, and I guess technically you would be able to see the astronaut poop somewhere on the moon too. Because they like <laughs> left it in bags on the surface of the, of the moon, right? <laughs> no one needs to take that. Yeah, nobody needs to take that back to Earth. Yeah, why not? That's, that's, when you it's have plutonium up there in the RTGs too. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Oh, that's right. right. I forgot. Yes. yes. I mean, would you rather have yeah. two kilos yeah. of excrement or two kilos of moon rock? Hmm. What do I want to bring with me? <laughs> uh, so, Sean, <laughs> is this this is this is live? Uh, no, this, no is, this is a couple. No, of it's a, it was like two days ago. I couldn't get Venus in the view just now, so uh, this is the best I can do now. It's pretty thick at the moment, quite big. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got a request for NGC 6826. Gary, I don't know if you can take a crack at that. Let's see. 6826? Yeah, from Michael Jobin. Our good friend Michael Jobin. Uh, Caldwell 15. And please do, because it's a planetary nebula, and I love planetary nebula. It might be a little small for his. Yeah, you're not going to get it. Oh, yeah, it's going to be it's tiny. Only about, it's only about one degree above the horizon. Oh, really? Yeah. So probably not. Probably yeah. not. Here's one, and also, Michael, oh, oh, I don't know if that's the same thing, the Lemon Slice Nebula? I've never even heard of no, that. No, I haven't heard of that one. No, i never heard of that. <laughs> I, never cool. I, figured out how to access I don't know, it sounds like it's going to leave a bad taste in our mouth. I learned all these things like 30, 40 years ago, and they only had numbers. And uh, Brian no Simpson asks, is mean. it safe to put a hair dryer that close to the correct... To the corrector plate, David. I, I have Wild it on Man lowest, Dickinson. I have it on the lowest setting. You know, there was an article in Sky and Telescope talking about the the pros and cons of doing that. And I don't usually do it when I'm observing. I usually have a a dew shield I put on the front. But usually the dew here in Florida, dew is so pervasive it's going to win eventually. I do it during the show because uh, it it cleans it quick. I, I need it to clean it within like 30 seconds. I can't really wait. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it won't break it. It'll cause yeah. uh, more distortion, but yeah, here's a uh, here's a good tip. Uh, this is what I do because I, I live you know live in Alabama, which the dew is horrendous, and you can actually get a com- desktop computer fan controller and use that as a power supply and to make your own uh, you know dew strips, uh, you know maybe for about a hundred dollars. Yeah, and, I've seen uh, people do that. I've seen and people make it works fantastic for me. Yeah make their own. You, you can get the whole do control system, but I'm too cheap to buy it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's way too expensive to buy it. Already, to buy it. Uh, already done. Oh, uh, yeah. But if you make it yourself and you and you have a little time on your hands, you can make yeah. it within like 20 yeah. minutes just with the soldering iron. So we've start. lost that. Oh, oh, I can see that moon in James View still, just at the top. Can, oh, lose yeah, it, there, there we go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Weeks in and out. Yeah, but we're going to lose it. As it moves further away from the planet. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go back to David's view of the moon because it's just pretty. I, I I should be able to bring the total lunar eclipse with this setup here. It seems to be... It, it gives a good full-size frame of the moon. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is... Yeah. I, I like the, the full view of the moon. Yeah, this is just with the life cam on modified, just aimed at the eyepiece. I have a 42 millimeter eyepiece in the telescope in a, an adapter bracket, so the the cam can hook onto the telescope, and it's really kind of simple. I huh. don't think I'll destroy the moon this time. Though. <laughs> Next don't time. destroy it. There'll destroy be no it. eclipses. Oh yeah, mm, that's like my favorite eclipses. event. I'm torn now. All right, I'm gonna move back to Shaw's view of the sun. Because awesome. And the request for 6826, it's too small and too close to the horizon for me. Okay. It's a small um, So Michael Jobin suggested NGC 3242. Take a look. And also a the Elephant Trunk Nebula. Hmm. I grabbed so, uh, NGC 2903, which is a nice little barred spiral if, if my sharing is working properly this time. It is not. not. No. Still, not. the lesser and greater. Oh, Can you try and uh, you cut it? There we try cutting oh, out. I shut, and... it, shut it off, and then I turned it back on. I did this a few times, and it just—it's not going back to a camera because I don't have my camera drivers installed. So I don't know. Maybe if that's what it is. What do you see now? Just just the two of us again. Still, you. You might want to try like reloading oh. your access to the hangout. Hmm. So we're looking at that. I'm going to look at some yeah. of our um, submissions into the event. So, um, and you know, like always, please, if if you do astrophotography yourself and not able to join us here live, please share with us your 
photos that you've taken. Um, you know, Everyone can go and find space porn, but if you can actually go and if, do your own astrophotography or use systems like eye telescope and stuff like that, please let us know. So this is from Chander Devgun. I, I hope I didn't slaughter your name, and I probably did. But uh, this is something we looked at a little earlier tonight. But this is from right. the eye telescope. Mm -hmm. Chander Devgun. Yeah. Nice. Oh, look at that horse head. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really important to note the difference, right? That that what we're doing is we're live. This is just right. fast and furious, trying to pull pictures up as quickly as we can and just get you a just the gist of what astronomy is all about. But if, you, if you've if you got the time and access to, for example, the eye telescope, they're like, what, 20-inch telescopes? <laughs> they're, they're plane waves. Really dark sky locations. Oh. Then this is the kind of stuff you can do. This is just... Well, phenomenal. and you know, so this is something that we looked at earlier with, with Gary, but... You know, like you just mentioned, Gary is doing a bunch of one-minute exposures, but seeing the work that Gary's done for very long periods, I mean, Gary, you're a champ. I love your work, especially when you do very long um, long sets of exposure. So if you guys have not circled Gary, take a look at his, his photography. Please do. Gary's got some awesome stuff out there. with, And especially, he's in Los Angeles County. You're, you're in L.A. County, or are you still over in San Bernardino? Gary's silent. He's now. muted. He's yeah. on the yeah. border of LA County, but yeah. really bad skies. But being able to use Sorry. that. Sorry. Yeah, I'm in San Bernardino County, just a few miles from right. LA. But you know, with the the really bad light pollution, you can really pull off some really good stuff with you have the right tools. And that's have you switched thing. your right. picture, Roy? Yep. All right, let's t let's take a look. This is with the refractor. Yep. Oh, you can oh, uh, nice. pull out the yeah. dust lanes. Yeah. Yeah. And this was what, M81? That's M81, two minutes in uh, luminance. Looks good. Yeah, I can really see the swirling nebulosity on this. It's great. Yeah. I like refractors much better. <laughs> I, I need to switch my camera over this because I got the good camera on the 10 inch. I got my QHY on this one, and I need to swap them. Cause you don't like just want to do that right now? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, let me drive out there. <laughs> <laughs> Roy, this is the ongoing joke: is that Roy has a uh, secret uh, facility in the in the Arizona desert. And so it's what? It's about a two-hour drive for you to get yeah, out with your about telescope. Two hours. Yeah. Two hours, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so he controls the whole thing. I don't know if you can switch to your exterior cam at some point. We can see what your From facility Skynet. is like. He, he controls Skynet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when when there is the when the war happens, that's where he's going to be observing the night sky. <laughs> well, here I'll I'll switch over to a page real quick that has my security cameras on it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like half observatory, half. Compound. Survivalist <laughs> compound. <laughs> Are you a doomsday prepper, Roy? Oh, there we go. He's, he's, he's prepping no. for dark skies. <laughs> when the zombies invade, they will be the darkest skies we've ever seen. And we won't be able to see them. Um, the NGC 3242 is not up for me. Oh, okay. I'm going to shoot for elephant trunk. Okay. <laughs> Looking right. at Jupiter... Here is one from Jason Higley. When did you, when did Jason take this picture? Because it's like he what we're seeing. He took this a few minutes ago from his drive. Yeah. Why why is he not in the virtual star party? That's a great <laughs> question, Jason. Jason uh, ping me or send me an email yeah. uh, in there. My email's in my my profile. But see the black spots of shadow transit happening right now. You can see Europa there on the side. In the great red spot. Yep. Wow, what a night! He's shooting with an eight awesome. focal cannon power shot, uh, six inch telescope. Wow, yeah, that's that's great, great for a six inch. Yeah, with yeah. a cannon power shot connected to a six inch telescope. Yeah, I mean that's like what? That's about a four hundred dollars setup. Between yeah. telescope and camera, maybe five hundred dollars. That's great. Yeah, that's 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 dirt cheap. Yeah, so this is not it's not that expensive to get into this hobby. And look at that. That's a beautiful, that's beautiful picture. That's Oh, that this is, is my face again. Let me put that back. That's fit. That, look that's at that picture of Scott. Oh. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> I'm a pretty man. <laughs> I'm Scott. Do you have any more pictures, Scott, to show? Uh, I will. Let me pull some up here in a second. But right. th that's, I mean, this is exactly it. So, Jason, yeah. we choose you to be in the <laughs> yeah. virtual star party. If you, if you can take a picture from your driveway and 
and post it to our page, then all the pieces are there. Yep. That's cool. He caught the moon while it was still on the disk of Jupiter. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, 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 that's that's see that. I don't know how well this is going to turn out, Fraser, but I'm trying one of the uh, an actual true color image of M42. Whoa, I'm going to Gary's picture first. This yeah, is well. a piece of the California Nebula. It's wow. just a little bit less than half of it. It continues cool. on in that streak. Yeah. Very nice. Phenomenal. Now, do you, Gary, do you have your app up that Thank shows you. your point of view, or your uh, field of view with the rest of the sky to give some context of how big um, this actually yes. is? Yes. Let me let me bring that up. And um, elephant trunk is too low to the horizon for me. I can't get it. Michael. So let's see. Check your um, stellarium and spot these objects. In fact, Michael, I choose you to help us uh, start <laughs> finding objects to find uh, every. Every week. So, when did the Starbucks turn into Pokemon? Hi, <laughs> Pikachu. Pikachu. Collect them all. <laughs> oh, so we make our no. we make them fight. Yeah. Oh. Somebody have the um, uh, power on to to get one of the planetaries in in Gemini twenty three ninety two or uh, yeah uh, twenty three seventy one. All right. So 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 Roy, you're gonna try and put Maybe on show. Right. Be something yep. that isn't red. Yeah, is, my sharing, is my sharing working? I can try. Uh, no, but nope. if, if it's not working, it's can, not. You put, can you throw them up into the event page? You know, yeah. I can oh, that's time. Sure. Yeah. There we go. Right. Okay. So, yeah, this is what Gary's looking at. I love <laughs> it. Yeah. California. Yeah, that's. Um, that's my field of view. The um, orientation's mm -hmm. flipped, but you can see the dark spot in here. Up, oh, well, the dark spot in here shows up on the main picture. Mm -hmm. Let me switch back to it, and you can see the picture. So I'm really getting about three quarters of it. Yeah, well, that, that, that's San Francisco Bay, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's disturbingly similar to California. All of the features are there. It's crazy. And I see so many Starbucks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Out in the ocean, too. <laughs> you can see the light pollution in Los Angeles, too. Yeah. yeah. For, for a reference of the size, here's my entire sky. Hey, that's my so, sky, too. Yeah. No, it's mine. I bought it. <laughs> you have to pay me. I have this certificate from a website. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Actually, okay, here's this is pretty much the end of our hour. I hate to do this, is, but we yeah. need to wrap There's this my up. view. Oh, yeah, there was, go. oh, that's beautiful. I think um, we've done good. We did great. Yeah, look yeah. at that. We had a full crowd. We had lots of telescopes going. Uh, it was awesome. So and uh, and thanks to all the people who posted pictures as well. That's just terrific, and all the great. <laughs> Good night. Whoa. So uh, I'm going to thank everyone in, in turn. Uh, David Dickinson, thank you so much. Thanks. That view of the moon that was, was cool. terrific. That's great. That was very cool. It's a nice yeah. night out. Yeah. Gary Ganella, thanks as always. You're very very welcome. It's my pleasure. James James McGee, good job on getting the moon and the. And the the uh, man and the red spot and the shadow, that is like three firsts in one night. You're muted, by the way. Hi, I'm Dave McGee. I'm, I'm Dave McGee. That was so cool. Somebody has her hand up my Go ahead, it James. A, it was a really cool time, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool. Hello. Hello, guys. Wow, I'm a bad influence on everybody in this show. Gary's <laughs> yeah. just shaking his head, man. <laughs> Michael Phillips, sorry we can't uh, we can't see any more views of your telescope. Just you and your and your uh, miniature version of yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One more thing to fix. I added the uh, M67 and NGC 2903 to the event page. So yeah, okay. Great. Those yeah, afterwards. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I'll I'll hit the uh, NEO probably sometime tomorrow. I'll make a nice little animation or something Perfect. out of it. Um, very cool. Cool. Uh, Mike Simmons Thank and you. plug while you're while you're here. Plug mm. plug away. Astronomers uh, borders. Uh, oh yeah. I'm too zoomed out. I'm wearing the t-shirt. Uh, astronomers. Uh, 
Sports.org. We're going to have uh, some announcements about Global Astronomy uh, Month coming up. That's in April. So maybe I'll get on uh, Space Hangout next week and talk about that. Sure, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, we and we'd love to participate. So, and I I say Let's volunteering all of the astronomers. We would love to participate. Yes, <laughs> Scott, our minions. Our we minions. will give them to. We will contribute yeah. them to your cause. Yeah. You, as I said before, you will be assimilated. <laughs> <laughs> We're handpicked volunteers. Well, Roy, if you can Absolutely. post that, can you make that picture bigger before we say goodbye? To yes, you? I, I'm downloading it right now. Well, so then I'll come, come back, back to you. Come back to me in in 20 seconds. All right. Okay. Shaw, thanks. Uh, thanks for staying up so late. <laughs> huh? What time is it there? What noon? <laughs> it's all uh, yeah, about half an hour to noon. Yeah. Perfect. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Or you're a real trooper. <laughs> he really is. He, he really is, is, boy. <laughs> Gets up in the morning, has a coffee, you know, and then finds his way to the telescope and, you know, works late into the afternoon. So, <laughs> Dominique, you need to put yes, sir. Desk, I think. Look at that shelf behind you. That's uh, that's something. Oh, i got to clean that up one of these years. Uh, it just yeah, adds that's... texture to your background. You're, you're actually in front of a blue screen. You actually right. have... Created that <laughs> or digitally. I ought to put up my 2001 poster in behind there. That that that, that would work perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, my wife actually came in and cleaned up my background just for things like this. Really? Oh. Yeah. Re remodeled. Well, <laughs> well, I'm single, so that's that's uh, that's why. <laughs> Uh, I'll send her over to fix you right now. <laughs> oh, <All right>. pretty please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, Scott. Let's tell people things to do. Let's give them marching orders before they leave us this week. So they First should of all, follow... Follow on Twitter, the underscore VSP. Yep. Circle us on Google Plus for virtual star party. If you really hate yourself, we are on Facebook. Uh, I right. <laughs> We, we are there. I do try to update it as, as much as I can. I don't go there that often, but I do try to keep that updated. Yeah. Um, but those are the big three places yeah. to, to find us there. Uh, subscribe to both Fraser's uh, and my channel, because we both go back and forth on hosting yep. the Virtual Star Party. So subscribe to our channels on YouTube, because we love doing this, and on the fly. So if we're doing stuff, we'll, every once in a while we'll have something just awesome happening with some of our astronomers, and we'll just do a Yep. A, an impromptu virtual star party. So if you subscribe to us, we will try to let everyone know what's going on with that. Awesome. All right. And uh, so the next thing that we're going to be doing is part of the kind of CosmoQuest community. We'll be doing Astronomy Cast tomorrow uh, at 12 noon. And I forget the topic. I think it's the photoelectric effect. Oh, nice. uh, so we'll be doing that uh, tomorrow at noon. And then, of course, the uh, Weekly Space Hangout on Friday at noon as well. So, uh, so hey, thanks, everyone, for watching. We really appreciate your support. Thanks for posting your pictures. Thank and you to I've all of the astronomers. I've got a coming out on Wednesday. So I have a mini-doc coming out on Wednesday for okay. Kepler's New Universe, it's called, on a Deep Astronomy channel with Tony Darnell. And we have awesome. Space Fan News that's also coming out on Friday. So all right. full week of awesome all space and astronomy content for you to consume and devour. And we will see you all uh, next week. Let's we'll end the show with Roy's beautiful view of the Orion Nebula. And we're we're going to go out and fight crime. Have you go out and fight crime, <laughs> Roy? Is your uh, hydrogen alpha mapped as green? No, my green is mapped as blue. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you shooting? You're shooting tricolor. You're not shooting narrow band, are you? Yeah, that's the actual tricolor, red, green, and blue, and I have them swapped. Okay, <laughs> then that makes sense. We're gonna puzzle this out for a week. That's where the Al Lantern comes from. It's Al no. scum. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see everyone later. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.